For this lesson, we're looking at ways to solve quadratic equations. And just remember, I wrote it in here in blue. D the solving means to determine what the variable equals to make the equation true. So in the end, when we finish, we should have x equals a number um, or whatever the variable happens to be. I tend to use x for these. So there's three different scenarios that we're going to look at. If we have the vertex form of an equation, so the vertex form here, um, what we can do for that is we can isolate. We can just get x by itself by doing Sam Deb Bedmus backwards. Okay, so you'll notice x appears only once here in part A. I'm going to undo the adding first by subtracting 75 from both sides. So when I subtract 75 from both sides, that's going to equal negative 75. Negative 75. And then to get x by itself, uh, the next thing I'm going to undo is the multiply by negative 3 by dividing both sides by negative 3. And then we get x squared being equal to, uh, that's going to be a 25. So to undo the exponent of 2, we're going to square root both sides. And when we square root, remember we always have two answers. We have a positive answer and a negative answer that works for that. So x is going to equal either positive 5 or negative 5. Okay, so there's two possible values. You could sub into the original equation, so sub in back here, so that when you put in positive 5, you're going to end up with the answer being equal to 0, or if you put in negative 5, your answer will equal 0. So you can always check your answers with that. The next one, again, I have vertex form. I have x appearing only once in the entire equation. We're going to undo the things around it. We're going to get rid of the add 98 by subtracting 98 from both sides. So we're going to have negative 98 there. There we go. And then I'm going to undo the multiply by negative 2 by dividing the negative 2 away from that. And if I take negative 98 and divide by negative 2, I'm going to get a 49 out of that. So that gives us x minus 4 all squared. The next thing we're going to do is undo the exponent of 2. We're going to square root. And when we do, we get two answers, a positive and a negative answer. I still have x minus 4 on the left side of the equal sign. That's going to equal positive or negative 7. And then to get the x by itself, I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So x will equal positive or negative 7, add 4. So that's going to give me my two answers here. I'm going to have x equals positive 7 plus 4, which is 11. Or, or that was supposed to say or, but it, does, it clearly does not look like an or. Let's try that again. Or, there we go, x would equal negative 7 plus 4, which is negative 3. So there's two values of x that you could sub into the original form of the equation, and the answer will be a 0. All right, so that's the vertex form. So you can make a little note that you're just doing Sam, Deb, Bedmus backwards to isolate for the x when you have your vertex form. Now, factored form, we looked at uh, before the break. The factored form here is when you have something times something. So I've written these in their factored form. Here I have for part A, a negative 2x multiplying an x plus an 8. The only way you get an answer of 0 when you multiply two things together is if one of those two factors equals 0, is a 0 themselves. So you're setting your factors equal to 0, and then you're solving the little mini equation. And I didn't need to put brackets around that 8 plus x plus 8. Um, so for the first one, I'm going to get x by itself by dividing both sides by negative 2. My x is going to equal 0. That's one possibility. The other possibility, I would minus 8 from both sides, and x equals negative 8. So either of those values of x, when I sub it into my equation, I would get an answer of 0. So likewise with this, you take your factors, you set them equal to 0. That's the only way the answer could equal 0. to, goodness, x plus 9 equals 0, and then you solve those little mini equations there. So magically, with the, the help of technology here, I have my two answers of x equals 7 thirds or x equals negative 9 halves. 
All right, the next thing we're going to look at is solving quadratic equations from their standard form. So these are the ones without any brackets in them. So when I have the standard form, we have a couple of options. Option A is that we can factor them to solve. So we pull up that factoring decision tree and we decide, um, can we factor this? So first, the kind of factoring we always want to look for is a common factor. This definitely has a common factor. Both of these terms have an x in them. So I'm going to divide both by x. And our factors then are x and x minus 8. And now we uh, solve it just like we did with the above examples where we're setting each individual factor equal to 0 and solving the mini equations that we get out of that. So x minus 8 equals 0 x equals 8. So we've got two answers for part A, 0 or 8. Um, the second one here, I'm looking for a common factor. I'm not seeing anything common between the three terms. I see three terms um, with a 1 in front of the x squared, so it's a simple trinomial. I'm looking for two numbers that are going to add to negative 7 and multiply to positive 10. 1 and 10 multiply to 10. 2 and 5 multiply to 10. I'm multiplying to positive, so they both have to have the same sign. But since I'm adding to a negative, they're both negatives, and voila, there is my answer right there. Because it's a simple trinomial, we can go directly to the factored form with the two numbers that we found, and then we set each factor equal to zero and solve the mini equations. So x equals 2. You would probably be able to go directly to x equals 2 and x equals 5, but if you can't and you need the little step in between, that's quite okay. So x equals positive 5 there. All right, moving on. First step. Now, something we mentioned before is to be able to use this factoring form, we have to get zero on one side of the equal sign. So I threw this example in here to remind you that we're going to have to rewrite this first to get zero on one side. So to get that x by its, or to get zero here, I'm just subtracting three from both sides here. All right, now I look for a common factor. I don't see anything common to all three terms. I have three terms. Um, it does not look like a simple trinomial because I don't have a one in front of the x squared. It's also not a perfect square because that's a two and two is not a perfect square number. I'm looking for two numbers that will add to one and multiply to negative six. And that could be, let's see, we could have one and six and two and three. Those are factors of six. I want to multiply to a negative, but I'm adding to a positive, excuse me, so my bigger number has to be the uh, positive value. This is the combination that works, but because we don't have a 1 in front of the x squared, we have to decompose our values. That's what these two numbers help us do. So I'm just breaking down the middle term into these two pieces. Everything else stays the same. And then we're going to pair them up for a common factor here. So the first two have a 2x in common. I pull that out. The second pair, they have a plus 3 in common. Pull that out. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, it's allergies, it's not COVID, just so you know. All right, so now we have our factored form. We're going to set each factor equal to 0. x minus 1 equals 0, or x equals positive 1. 2x plus 3 equals 0. Slide this up a little bit. We're going to get 2x. Ooh, 2x equals negative 3. Divide both sides by 2. x equals negative 3 over 2. All right, last example on this part. For this, we're going to look for two numbers um, for factoring that will add to negative 25 and multiply, negative 25 here, and multiply to whatever 14 times 6 is. So 14 times 6 is 84. So we look for two numbers that are going to add to negative 25 and multiply to 84. Oh boy, these are bigger numbers now that we have to work with. Um, I did check for a common factor first, and there wasn't a common factor. So, factors of 84, 1 and 84, of course, 2 and 42 would work to multiply to 84. Whoops, I said 42 and wrote 43, weird. Um, and both of these numbers are going to be negatives, and 
um, to multiply to a positive and add to a negative. So let's try some other ones because those don't work so far. Okay, and I found a couple more, negative 3 and negative 28, and then negative 4 and negative 21, and that one actually works. So we can go into our tricky trinomial here. So it took a little bit of work to come up with our two numbers that were going to work for this. Pair them up for a common factor. The first two have a 2 and an x in common. We're going to get an x minus 2. The second pair have a 7, but I want a positive x, so I'm going to make that a minus 7. Oops, that shouldn't be x minus 2, that should be 3x minus 2. And then that would be a 3x minus 2 again. And then we have our common factor of 3x minus 2 multiplying the 2x minus 7. And then we set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So we're going to get 3x equaling 2, or x equals 2 over 3, or um, we would have 2x equals 7, divide both sides by 2, x equals 7 halves. So those are our two answers for that one. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, we're going to look on the next video how we can solve standard form without using factoring, because not all quadratics do factor, so that's a bit of a problem. Stay tuned.